Hello friends and welcome back. In this lecture, we will be implementing a rectangle class in Java. Let's get started. Here is the rectangle class diagram. I want you to pause the video and have a look at this diagram to figure out the attributes and methods of the rectangle class. And after that, implement the class inside Java. Notice that the default value for the width and the height is 1.0, alright? So pause the video and get started. Okay, so let's have a look at this class diagram. The class is called rectangle. It has two attributes. Both these attributes are private. The first one is the width. The second one is the height. They are both doubles. Over here, we have two constructors, of course, public constructors. The first one takes no parameters. And we need to remember that the default value for the width and the height is 1.0. And the second one takes two parameters, which are two doubles. So these are the values for the width and the height. After that, we have a public method getArea, which should return the area, which is the double. We have getParameter, which should return the parameter, which is also a double. And of course, we should implement all the getters and the setters for the attributes of this class. So let's go to IntelliJ and implement the rectangle class. So over here, I created a new project inside IntelliJ. So let's start by creating a new class. So inside our package, right click and go to new Java class. And as we said, the class is called rectangle. Press enter and the class will be created as you can see. Let me close this and let's zoom in. So first of all, let's start with the attributes. So we have two private attributes, the private double width and also the private double height, right? All right, now let's create the first constructor. It is a public constructor and it is called rectangle. It doesn't take any parameters and inside it, we want to initialize the value of our width and height to be equal to one. So in a little bit, we will implement the second constructor, which takes two parameters, right? So I'm going to call it and I will give it 1.0, the value for the width and 1.0, the value for the height. Now let's implement the second constructor. So it is a public constructor and it is called rectangle. It takes a double width and also a double height like this. Inside this constructor, we will assign the attribute width to be equal to the parameter width and also the attribute height to be equal to the parameter height, like this. So as you can see, in the first constructor, we are calling this constructor over here and we are passing 1.0 and 1.0. So the attribute width will be assigned to one and the height will be assigned to one. So now we are done implementing the constructors. Let's implement the getArea method. So over here, it is a public method and it returns a double and it is called getArea. It doesn't take parameters and inside it, we will return the area of the rectangle. So let's return and over here, we will calculate the area of the rectangle. The area is equal to the width multiplied by the height. So I'm going to use the this keyword and I will get the attribute width and I will multiply it by the attribute height like this. Now let's implement the get parameter method. It is a public method and it will also return a double. It is called get parameter. It takes no parameters and inside it, we will return the parameter. So we will return and over here, we will calculate the parameter. So the parameter is equal to two multiplied by the width plus the height. So over here, I will add the width to the height like this. All right. Now we still have the getters and the setters. So let's press alt and insert and let's choose getter and setter. I will choose the width and the height and press enter. So as you can see, the getters and the setters are automatically generated. So we finished implementing the rectangle class and notice that it is a public class. So we are able to use it in any other class. So now let's write a small program and use the rectangle class. We want to write a program and create an array of three rectangles. These rectangles should be read from the keyboard. So the values of the attributes of each rectangle should be taken from the user. After we create the three rectangles, we will print the attributes of each rectangle. So pause the video and try to do this. So let's go to IntelliJ. As you can see, we are inside the main class. So we are able to write some code in the main method and we can execute it, right? So let's start by creating an array of three rectangles. So the type is rectangle. And as you can see, we can access this class because it is a public class. And also we can see the package of this class. It is com.nezoacademy. So we want a rectangle array and let's call it rectangles. It's going to be equal to a new rectangle array of three elements. Now remember that these three elements are all equal to null. So the array looks like this, all right? In other words, if we try to access the first element and use the dot operator, we will get an exception because currently the first element is null. We should instantiate the object before using the dot operator. So we are going to use a loop. So I'm going to use a for loop and we want to iterate three times from i equals zero until the end of the rectangle like this. All right. So inside this loop, 
First of all, we will ask the user if he wants to give us the width and the height. If not, then the width and the height will be equal to one, which is the default value. So let's print, do you want to enter the width and the height? Let me remove this extra space like this. Now let's take the choice of the user. So let's create a character, which is choice, and we want to read it from the keyboard, right? So let's create a scanner object over here. So let's say we have a scanner, which is called input, and it is equal to a new scanner, and we will pass system.in, all right? Now over here, we can read this character from the keyboard. So let's say input.next, and we'll take the first character of this string. So we'll use the char at method, we will take the character at index zero. Suppose that this character can be y or n. So over here, let's tell the user to enter y or n like this. Now let me break this into multiple lines in order to be visible like this. Now, after we get the result from the user, we will use an if statement. So if the choice is equal to the character y, then we will take the width and the height from the user and then we'll instantiate the object, right? So have a look over here. Let's get the element at index i like this and we'll assign this element to a new rectangle. We want to give it two parameters, the width and the height. So we'll use input.next double, and also we will use input.next double. So now we are reading the doubles from the user, and we are instantiating the rectangle object. Now if the choice is not a small letter y, let's see if it is n. So if the choice is equal to a small letter n, then we will simply instantiate a rectangle without reading the width and the height from the user. So we'll assign the current element to be equal to a new rectangle. In this case, the width and the height will be equal to 1.0. And finally, let's print that the user gave us an invalid option. So let's say invalid. And for simplicity, let's suppose that if the user gives us an invalid option, we will instantiate the object without reading the width and the height. So we can do this in two ways. First of all, let me remove this statement and add a block of code over here. So if the option is invalid, we will tell the user that it is invalid and after that, we'll instantiate the current rectangle with a new rectangle, all right? Now let's see the other way. I will simply remove the else statement and over here, I will remove the if statement. So now, if the option is equal to y, then we will read the values from the user and instantiate the object. And if the choice is anything else than y, then we will instantiate the object without reading the width and the height, perfect. So now after this loop is executed, all the rectangles inside the array will be instantiated. So now let's use another loop over here. But before that, let's print the rectangles R and let's iterate over the array. So a for loop int i equals zero, i is less than rectangles.length and i plus plus. Over here we have one statement. We will print the information of the current rectangle. So let's print, let's say rectangle and let's concatenate the number. So i plus one. And after that, let's concatenate a colon then we'll say that the width is equal to the width. So concatenate this with a rectangle sub i dot get width. So over here we are using the getter in order to get the value of the width. And after that, we will concatenate this with the value of the height. So put a comma followed by the height and we'll concatenate the value of the height. Rectangles sub i dot get height like this. I don't care about the area or the parameter. If you want, you can print them. Now, as you can see, this statement is very long. So put the cursor over here and press enter and let's break it onto multiple lines. We will print the number of the rectangle and after that we will print the width and after that we will print the height like this. Now the statement is more visible, right? Now of course we could have written this program in another way. This code over here could be extracted into a method that reads the value from the user and returns a new rectangle and we will assign the rectangle to the current element of the array. Also, this code over here could be a method that prints the element of the array, but this is not the purpose of this exercise. So I will leave that to you in order to implement. Now let's try the program. Let's run it. So over here, we are filling the first rectangle. Let's say we don't want to enter the width and the height. So the first rectangle should be a rectangle with width and height equal to one. Now let's say we want to enter the width and the height for the second rectangle. So as you can see, now the program is waiting for us to enter the width and the height. So over here, we can add a print statement and tell the user to enter the width and the height, all right? But for now, it's okay. Let's say the width is equal to three and the height is equal to six. Press enter. Now we are filling the third rectangle. Let's enter the width and the height. Let's say eight and nine. Press enter. And these are our rectangles. And as you can see, the information is correct. And this is it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.